Hey boys and girls, this is Miss Hopkins and I'm glad to get to spend some virtual time with you today. Um, I want you to know that I miss you so much. Um, I wish I could give you a big old squeeze hug right now, but I want you to know that I love you. Um, if you need anything, reach out and let me know. Um, I'll be glad to do anything that I can to help you, but I miss you. I hope you're having fun playing. Um, don't forget to spend some time reading. You don't want to lose all those skills that we've worked hard to learn this year. So spend a few minutes reading a little bit um, every day and it will help you so much as you transition into first grade because you're first graders now. And so I'm so excited. So we're gonna start, we're gonna look at a story today together. And this story is called, Click Clack Moo Cows That Type. And so as readers, we're gonna start, we're gonna look at the front cover of our book. And I want you to think, Click Clack Moo Cows That Type. Do you think this story is gonna be fiction? or nonfiction. Well, this story is fiction, and that means that it's not real. Um, what can we see on the cover that lets us know that our story isn't real? You're right, it has a typewriter, and cows really can't type on a typewriter. Um, now, some of you may have never seen a typewriter before, and I'm gonna show you this picture up close of a typewriter. And this is what people would use before computers and um, they could put a piece of paper. You can see there's a piece of paper there in the top. They would put a piece of paper in and then they would type on those keys. Each key had a letter on it, just like on a computer keyboard. And they would type their message onto the piece of paper. And when they were done, they would pull out that piece of paper from the top and it would have all the information that they put on there on it. Um, and that's gonna be a very important piece of our story today. So we're going to look again at the book, Click Clack Moo, Cows That Type. So here's our story, Click Clack Moo, Cows That Type. And it's by Doreen Cronin. Um, she is the author. We know that author means that they write the words to our story. Remember, authors write the words. Then we see pictures by Betsy Lewin. And that means that Betsy Loon was the illustrator. And illustrator means illustrator draws the pictures. We turn the page and we have our title page telling us the title, the name of our book. Title page, the name of our book, the author and the illustrator again. And there we see that important typewriter. Farmer Brown has a problem. His cows like to type. All day long, he hears, click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, clickety, clack, moo. Mm, does he look happy about that? At first, he couldn't believe his ears. Cows that type? Impossible. Click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, clickety, clack, moo. Then he couldn't believe his eyes. Posted on the door of the barn, there was a sign. Dear Farmer Brown, the barn is very cold at night. We'd like some electric blankets. Sincerely, the cows. Hmm, you think Farmer Brown's gonna like that? It was bad enough that the cows had found the old typewriter in the barn. Now they wanted electric blankets? No what? said Farmer Brown. No electric blankets. So the cows went on strike. They left a note on the barn door. When you go on strike, that means you're not gonna work anymore. There's the sign on the door and it says, sorry, we're closed. No milk today. Uh oh, look at the shadow of Farmer Brown. How do you think he's feeling? No milk today, cried Farmer Brown in the back. In the background, he heard the cows busy at work. Click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, clickety, clack, moo. The next day, he got another note. Dear Farmer Brown, the hens are cold too. They'd like electric blankets. Sincerely, the cows. 
Uh-oh, so now the cows are writing notes, but who else is helping? The hens. How do you think Farmer Brown's gonna feel? The cows were growing impatient with the farmer. They left a new note on the barn door. Closed. No milk, no eggs. Uh-oh, how do you think Farmer Brown's gonna feel? No eggs, cried Farmer Brown. In the background, he heard them. Click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, clickety, clack, moo. Cows that type, hens on strike. Whoever heard of such a thing? How can I run a farm with no milk and no eggs? Farmer Brown was furious. There's Farmer Brown. What do you think another word for furious would be? He was mad. Hmm. Farmer Brown got out his own typewriter. Dear cows and hens, there will be no electric blankets. You are cows and hens. I demand milk and eggs. Sincerely, Farmer Brown. Mm, do you think he's gonna get his milk and his eggs? Duck was a neutral party. So he brought the ultimatum to the cows. He was a neutral party. That means he wasn't really getting anything out of the deal. So he was gonna take the note from the farmer to the animals. The cows held an emergency meeting. All the animals gathered around the barn to snoop, but none of them could understand moo. All night long, Farmer Brown waited for an answer. What do you think the answer is gonna be? Duck knocked on the duck knocked on the door early the next morning, and he handed Farmer Brown a note. So their ducks bringing a note to the animal to Farmer Brown from the animals. Dear Farmer Brown, we will get, exchange our typewriter for electric blankets. Leave them outside the barn door, and we will send Duck over with the typewriter. Sincerely, the cows. Hmm. So they wanted to make a deal. They were going to give the typewriter to Farmer Brown if Farmer Brown would give them electric blankets. Do you think he'll do it? Farmer Brown decided this was a good deal. He left the blankets next to the barn door and waited for Duck to come with the typewriter. The next morning, he got a note. Dear Farmer Brown, the pond is quite boring. We would like a diving board. Sincerely, the ducks. Click, clack, quack. Click, clack, quack. Clickety, clack, quack. Uh-oh. Oh my goodness. Did the duck give Farmer Brown the typewriter? No, they kept it to write their own notes. What do you think Farmer Brown's gonna do? Oh, and here's the end of the story. Now this page is important. There's no pictures. So we've got to use our clues. Hmm. Did the ducks get what they wanted? They did. There's their diving board. So they got what they wanted from Farmer Brown, didn't they? Well, I'm going to show you some activities that you can do, sorry, that you can do with our story. So if you need modifications, or if you just wanna hear the story again, you can click and watch this video as many times as you like. So I'm gonna give you four activities that you can do. So this is just something you can do very easy on a sheet of paper. I just made two boxes. And here we've got a C, and if you're in my class, you know that C stands for characters. And characters are the people or the animals in our story. And here you could draw a picture of the characters in our story. And it would be really nice if you could add some labels. And remember labels. If you draw a picture of a cow, you need to write the word cow to get that extra writing practice in there. We also have S. And that S stands for setting. Setting is where the characters in the story are. 
So where were our characters in the story? Now remember, you want to help me make that picture in my mind. So um, give me some good drawings. Give me some labels. Tell me what time of day it was. Um, what did the what did it look like? So there's one activity that you could do one day is the characters in the setting. The next day you could go to an organizer that looks kind of like this. And if you're in my class, you've seen these boxes too. So here we have P, and that P stands for problem. In our story, the characters have a problem. And usually the problem is something that went wrong, um, something that they need. So here, uh, you could draw a picture of what the problem was and use your writing skills, write a sentence or two and tell me what the problem of the story was. Then we have S. Every problem, you have to fix it. And fixing the problem is called the solution. So the solution, how did the characters fix their problem? That's the solution. So you could draw a picture and use your words and write me a couple of sentences about how they fix their problem. So that's something you could do for day two. Another activity that you can do. Maybe day three, the next day, you can make some boxes like this. And you've seen these boxes before when we were um, talking about our stories. And you know that when we retell a story, we need to make sure that we tell it in order or in sequence. And so we want to start at the beginning. And then we're going to go to the middle. And then we're going to go to the end. Our stories have to be retold in order or they're not going to make any sense. So maybe you could start on day three and you can draw me a picture of what happened at the beginning. Draw me a picture of what happened in the middle. Draw me a picture of what happened at the end. And that's a good way to organize our thoughts so that we can start the writing process is drawing those pictures. And that's a great um, way for modifications. Um, if you need help remembering what happened in the beginning, middle, or end. And remember, you can go back and watch that video of the story um, if you need some extra help. Then, here's where we add it all together. And so you can get a sheet of paper and you're gonna, you can use those picture boxes to help you. First, that's the beginning of our story. So look what happened at the beginning and now's where you use your words, first. And then write and tell me what happened first in our story. Then our middle goes with next. Next, tell me what happened in our story. Then you can move on and use the transition word then. Or if you're ready to tell me what happened at the end of our story, you could tell me last and tell me what happened at the end of our story. And that's where you would write sentences and use your words. Remember, every sentence needs to start with a capital letter. And at the end of your sentence, if you're having a telling sentence, you need to end that sentence with a period. And remember, a period is just a simple dot on the end on the page um, when you're um, finished with that sentence. So there are a few ideas of some activities that you can do with the story. Click, clack, moo, clouds that type. So I've enjoyed spending some time with you today. I hope that you enjoyed our story and there are four great activities that we would be doing in our classroom if we were reading this story together. So um, I hope that you enjoy. Leave me some pictures of the work that you do in the comments and I'll try to comment on them. Um, and that way I can say hi and um, show off that great work that you're doing. I'm so proud of you. I miss you and I love you and I hope to see you soon. Bye guys.